So here we are with question one in our VCAR 2020 chemistry exam. All the multiple choice questions are done and you can see those videos in other links there. But this one here is looking at the short answer question one, which is worth nine marks. Now the answer question here basically is methanol is a very useful fuel, ignore that. We've got a reaction here saying that the delta H here is um, negative by the looks of it. We've got a energy profile diagram. Let's just look at the actual question itself. On the energy profile diagram above, sketch how a catalyst would alter the reaction pathway. What does a catalyst do? It lowers the activation energy. So therefore this is the reactivation energy here. So all we are gonna do is show the difference what a catalyst will do, which will be simply taking our activation energy and having a lower hump there. So therefore this one here, I'm gonna write it there, dot, 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 equals catalyst, where we have a lower activation energy. Our products stay the same down here. They are still the same there. Our reactants stay the same. It's just the fact that the catalyst lowers that activation energy and there is our answer to part A. Part B, let's have a look at this. How does the reaction, sorry, how does the reaction temperature affect the yield, yield is your Chilius principle of methanol from biogas. In your answer, refer to Chilius principle, there we go. So let's have a look at what we've got. It's all based around um, the delta H. So therefore, let's just take a example. Let's just take with, if we increase temperature, what's gonna happen? If I increase temperature, Lichtilius principle says it will partially, remember keywords here for Lichtilius principle is partially oppose this, and favor the endothermic reaction. All right, so let's just go to whatever happens here. If I increase temperature, Lichtilius principle says it will partially oppose this and favor the endothermic reaction. Our reaction here, if I just look at this, our reaction here is delta H is negative, so therefore it's exothermic. So therefore the endothermic will be the reverse reaction. So therefore this will be favor the reverse reaction and it will decrease the yield of um, methanol. It's methanol, isn't it? Yep, it's methanol. Cool. So therefore, this is the idea of Lichtilius principle in terms of temperature. Now, let's have a look at what the next one is. How does the reaction pressure affect the yield of methanol? Again, referring to Lichtilius principle. Even if it didn't say it, refer to Lichtilius principle. Because I know it's yield, I know I'm going to be talking about um, equilibrium shift and Lichtilius principle based on that. So let's again take a side. If we do want to talk about reaction pressure, I'll say what happens if we increase pressure. Increase pressure will, Lichtilius principle says it will partially, partially oppose this and favor the side of the reaction with less particles, reaction with less particles. All right, so that's just key knowledge of Lichtilius principle. If you're increasing pressure, we're gonna favor the side with less particles to decrease pressure, to partially oppose the increase in pressure. So let's have a look at my reaction here. Over here, I've got one particle. Over here, I've got three particles. So what that means is my increase in pressure is gonna push this reaction forwards. So therefore, we're gonna say, therefore it would favor the forwards reaction, reaction, and increase yield because we're producing more products. It's gonna increase our yield. Again, I'm going back and talking about yield. I'm talking about Lichtilius principle, and I think I've covered all the things for those two questions there. Let's move on to part C. Write an equilibrium expression. So write the expression for the equilibrium constant Kc for this reaction. Kc is gonna be equal to, now it's gonna be concentration of products over reactants to the powers. So I'm gonna say it's a concentration of my methanol, CH3OH, square bracket, divided by the concentration of 
carbon monoxide times by the concentration of hydrogen squared because my coefficient of hydrogen is um, two there. So therefore I've got my equilibrium expression. I'm also gonna put a unit for this because equilibrium expression should have units. My unit is gonna be molar divided by molar times molar squared cancels out. So therefore it's gonna be molar to the negative two is my unit, which is one over molar squared equals molar to the negative two. So therefore my unit there is um, molar to the negative two. So therefore that's my equilibrium expression. It's really annoying they've only given you one line here because obviously you need to write a fraction, it's kind of hard to do that. But um, square brackets indicating concentrations, very important there. Get double checking the fact that it is clear. My writing is relatively clear. You can, you know my writing's terrible, but I'll still go back and try and make sure it's readable and that all my numbers are readable as well. That's concentration of my methanol, which is a coefficient of one, divided by my concentration of carbon monoxide times my concentration of hydrogen gas squared. And that's the answer there. Moving on to part D. Uh, this is an ice question. We've got a um, certain amount of stuff was added to a container and allowed to reach equilibrium. And we've got our equilibrium concentration at equi of something here. So therefore it's gonna be ice, I-C-E. Let's have a look at what we've got. We're starting off with, um, actually let's not do that. Let's go I-C-E here. And let's put our equation at the top here. We've got what do we have? CO, then we had 2H2, and we have CH3OH here. And therefore, what do we have? We're starting off with 0 0.76 mole of carbon monoxide, and we're starting off with 0 0.525 mole of hydrogen. And at the end of the day, at equilibrium, we're going to reach 0 0.122 mole of methanol. Again, I'm checking the fact that they're all moles. That's all good. So therefore I can use my ice table in moles and then I can work out my equilibrium concentrations to then get to what KC is gonna be at the end of it. I could convert these into concentration straight away, but I'm gonna do it at the end. It doesn't really matter. As long as the numbers you're plugging in to your ice section have the same units, you should be right. Anyway, what does that mean? My change, I know that this was zero to start off with, so this increased by 0 0.122. So therefore, what that means is this must have decreased by twice as much. This is, is our change is in our ratio. This would have gone down by 0 0.244. This must have gone down by 0 0.122 because it's a one-to-one -one ratio of these two. So therefore, I can get my trusty calculator is here and turn it on, clear, clear. And I've got 0.525 take away 0.244 gives me 0 0.281. And then 0 0.760 take away 0 0.122 gives me 0 0.638. And there my equilibrium concentrations for my um, species. I can then turn, sorry, my equilibrium moles Remember, this is in mole again, mole and mole. I then need to get a concentration. So we've got a 500 mil container. So therefore my concentrations will be two times this or this divided by 0.5. So therefore if I just do that times by two is 1.276.281 times two is 0 0.562. And then that is gonna be 0 0.244. That's all my concentrations. So that's all good there. I can then bang this into my equilibrium constant. So my Kc is gonna be equal to this guy here, which is 0 0.244 divided by this guy here, which is 1.276 times by this guy here squared, 0 0.562 to the power of two because my hydrogen was squared here. So therefore, get my calculator again. I'll go 0.244 divided by bracket. Everything underneath here is gonna go in a bracket. 1.276 times by bracket, 0 0.562 bracket squared. Uh, where am I squared? and close off that other bracket, should give me an answer of 0 0.605 um, molar 
to the negative two. I'm just gonna go check my significant figures there. I've got three significant figures here, three here, three here. It's a 500 mil container, so I'm guessing that's three as well. So therefore, I should be rounding to three significant figures. That should be my answer there. Key thing here is setting up your ice table nicely, putting your numbers in, and then working through it um, systematically. This is an ice question because we're starting off with an, an initial amount of stuff. We're allowing that to change and reach equilibrium. So therefore we have an initial change equilibrium. Um, pressure point again is making sure that we convert this into concentration um, and then check your sniffing figures because this is a classic question of trying to work out the right sniffing figures. That's question uh, 1D done. Let's see if we've got any more. Nope, that's one done here. Awesome. Next up will be question two in my next video.